Okay, everybody, in today's video, I'm gonna talk about how to do a leak down test on this single cylinder Kohler. Um, if you watched my last video, I talked about doing compression test and why that was difficult to do on this engine because of the automatic compression release. So today we're gonna to do a leak down test instead. And what's different about the leak down test is instead of spinning the engine and creating compression, um, we actually hook up compressed air to the cylinder and check for leaks either through the piston or the valves or possibly the head gasket. So to do a leak down test, you need a leak down tester like this one here. This is just a cheap one from Harbor Freight. And there's two gauges on there. One is the air pressure. The other one here is a gauge that shows the amount of leakage that that's occurring in the, in the engine. Typically with a good engine, we want to see somewhere in this green range here, um, probably around 20% would be good. Uh, if this engine needs a rebuild, we might see something, you know, either up in the moderate or high, high leakage range. We'll have to see what we find out. Okay, so the first thing we need to do on this engine is get it in the top dead center position. And what that means is that the piston will be all the way up to the top and both valves will be closed. In my case, I took the valve cover off so I could see the valve operation. So I can just spin the engine around until I see that both valves are closed. The other way you can do it is you can find the timing marks on the flywheel. In this case, on this cooler engine, you can look through that hole um, and, and it's marked with a T. So when the flywheel is in that position here, lined up in the hole, then the engine should be a top dead center position. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and screw this hose into the top of the, the engine here in the spark plug hole. That nice and snug. And we're gonna take the leak down tester there's a pressure regulator on here. We want to turn that down, all the way down. So after we've done that, we can go ahead and hook up our compressed air. Keep in mind that this isn't hooked up to the engine at this time. Go ahead and hook up the compressed air. And we want to turn the regulator up until the needle on the, on the right gauge goes all the way over to the zero. Just like that. All right, so now we're ready to go ahead and hook up the hoses together. And once I do that, there's gonna be pressure in the uh, combustion chamber. And what it might wanna do from the air pressure is push the piston down. So if it tries to do that, I'm gonna to have to move the flywheel back to get that engine back to the top dead center position. Otherwise, it's gonna push the piston down far enough that a valve's gonna open. We're gonna start getting leakage that, we, that isn't really a problem. So let's go ahead and hook that up. All right, so you can see right there, I have to hold the flywheel because it keeps wanting to push the piston down. We're right around 20% right now, which is actually pretty good. And let it go. All right, so I'm actually kind of surprised that we got such a good reading. Uh, with as much smoke that was coming out of this engine, I would have bet that we would have had some kind of problem with the rings. Um, so far, this test kind of shows that we don't. Um, there wasn't any significant leakage that I could hear or see on the gauge of any, any kind, either valves or the piston. So now I'm kind of curious if this engine has been rebuilt um, or what, and, and also what was causing the excessive smoking. So I think what I'll probably end up doing is I'll disassemble this engine a little bit further, take the head off, see what I kind of condition the piston and the combustion chamber. And I, I suspect there's going to be a lot of carbon buildup from all the smoke. Um, but I'd also like to see if this engine was rebuilt. And we might be able to see that by looking at the piston. If the, if the engine was bored over, 10, 20, 30 over, um, we should have those marks on the piston that was put in. So on the next video, I'll probably be pulling the head and we'll give it a look. All right, that's it for this time. Um, please hit that subscribe button and that like button if you like this video today. Uh, stay tuned for my next video whenever we go ahead and start tearing this engine out a little further. Thanks for watching.